For those of us who feel your horn in your vehicle is vastly underpowered and really does not deliver confidence on its usage, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade to dual electric air horns. Stay tuned. Welcome everyone to the Derpzilla channel. And for today, I'll be doing some work on my wife's 2019 Ford Mustang. She's unfortunately a, a little bit of an erratic driver. Uh, some may say uh, dangerous, but hopefully we're gonna help <laughs> improve her odds on the roads and perhaps odds of others who cannot hear her horn. Yes, 2019 and up Mustangs, I believe, come with a single horn oddly enough you can see it down right down there and it's on a bracket that has a spot for another horn so uh, i believe the before the 2019s they had two horns there now the 2019 and up have a single horn and the single horn that they do include is you know almost it's almost sounds like a toy car it's really she can honk the horn at somebody who pulls out in front of her and they can barely hear it or they don't hear it at all definitely a safety hazard so I figured why not upgrade her to a set, that's right, two of these high decibel snail air horns. These are electric air horns. They're supposed to be 150 decibels. I don't think it'll be 150 decibels, but I think they're gonna be a margin of magnitude louder and better to have than what comes in this car. So we're gonna go ahead and get these, or actually this single, useless horn out and get two of these hopefully amazon specials here i mean the name definitely inspires confidence they're the farben electricity machine horns that sounds super super high tech and and really awesome we're gonna get both of these installed uh it should be relatively simple and uh yeah let's go ahead and get in there get this other one taken out see what we're working with do some comparisons we'll see what it sounds like before i actually uninstall this how many decibels we can hit with a decibel reader, get these bad boys installed if everything hooks up. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a test with these and see if, are, you know, are these gonna be louder? I think they will be, but we'll see exactly how loud and how much louder they are compared to the OEM one. So let's go ahead and dive in, get these bad boys installed, hopefully make the road safer for my wife and for everybody who's driving near or around my wife. Uh, yeah, so stay safe out there. I wanted to set the baseline on how loud the OEM horn is. So we're gonna go ahead and honk it. And we're gonna see with this decibel meter, super high tech, uh, what the max reading will be. And then we will compare it to the upgraded horns uh, once we're done with the install. And it says 96 decibels, I'm not too far from it. And it looks like about 103. So 103 max from this distance, which is relatively close. So it'd be about pedestrian and walking in front of you. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're looking at 103 max. Let's go ahead and get the car opened up and we'll get these new fancy horns installed. As you saw, about 103 decibels max on the uh, stock horn. I went ahead and kind of moved the car off to the side. I had it in the garage earlier, but cool down. Uh, and actually feels pretty nice out right now and it might rain and i didn't want my car to get rained on i let my wife's car get rained on so i guess she complain about that but i wanted to show you guys real quick that is the horn there is the bracket and the bracket does have provisions for a second horn and out i know a lot of people do upgrade to the dual horn setup from the mustang which you can order um at least i know you could i'm not sure if you still can but it's right there and the bracket's held on looks like maybe by one screw hope you can see it right there behind the blue trim right there it's a single looks like a single bolt or screw i'll take a look at that here and shortly she will unscrew that and then that will break the whole bracket loose and we can bring the bracket out but to get better uh angle on everything i'm gonna go ahead and uh remove i might need a trim tool this little harness there we go maybe i can get it off and that just give me a little bit more room so i don't get my arm chopped off so i'm gonna get my trim tool kind of pop this loose so I don't break it and then we go ahead and work on getting that bolt I'll check what size it is and then we'll get that removed and then we can take a look at what we got going on and hopefully remove that I believe it's just one 
plug uh, that plugs into it. So yeah, let's go ahead and get going. As you can see, I remove this little radiator trim piece that sits right up here. And it's super easy, just eight of these little pop clips. You just want to pop out the middle and then that will give you clearance so you can then pop out the whole clip. There was eight of these and you can see I just set it over here. And I just, you know, you don't have to do this, but for me, uh, gave me a little bit more room to get my arm further into the car without uh, gashing it up on some of the plastic, <laughs> plastic mounting uh, sections over here, which was kind of gouging me in the arm, which is mainly this one. But by opening this up, I got a little bit more room here. I can actually get my arm in there because I did drop my, my light to the bottom of the tray there and uh, figured, you know, rather than just trying to fish it out with some kind of, uh, you know, grip arm or something like that, I just go ahead and pull this trim off. Super easy. Took about two minutes. Now I actually have much more room to get down to that horn, get that screw removed, and then get that thing up out of here. OEM horn right here on the left. Still on the two horn bracket with one horn. I guess they saved 50 cents by getting rid of one of the two horns for whatever reason. Uh, we have the, of course, the electric air horn here on the side. You can see the difference in size is just crazy. Hopefully this thing can fit. Um, I guess we'll find out. And I gotta figure out a way to get it to mount on this bracket. I believe I can just um, put a bolt and tie it in here and just hook it like that. And then I have to angle the second one, maybe like this. They did give me this little instruction manual for wiring it up. It looks like it's this one right here. And they do want you to use a 30 amp fuse and stuff like that. So they've actually included some stuff here. Uh, so you're gonna have positive uh, for the battery, negative. Um, and then also you're gonna have the trigger button. I'm gonna try wiring it into the current horn button. So if you hit the normal horn, it will actually, you know, it'll activate the upgraded uh, new horns. So without any additional funky wiring or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one up. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm gonna get this off the bracket, but uh, I did want to point out uh, this one right here did use a, I believe it was an, let me see here, eight millimeter to actually remove this from the car. So it's an eight millimeter uh, ratchet comes out kind of a pain just make sure you uh, you know keep track of the bolt don't lose it you can reach your arm in there and retrieve anything that falls down and of course this is then plugged in with an actual uh, harness you just have to push down a little tab and then it'll just come loose um, you might want to do that before you actually remove it from the car but i did it afterwards so it was a little bit harder to get this to release but it did and uh, yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and map out this wiring i'm gonna get the other horn opened up we're gonna look about getting this amount in the brackets. I'll show you guys how I ended up running it and how it looks before I put it back in the car. Looking at the bracket here, I actually had to drill it out slightly with uh, my drill here. I'm not sure which drill bit size it is, but just went ahead and you wanted to line it up to be able to fit through the included bolts to hold the new electric air horn to the bracket. So I just opened it up just a tad bit. So now these actually go in and there'll be a nut on the other side and then we can attach the new horns to this bracket. Now, because of how big they are, uh, uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna orientate these. I'm gonna see what I can get and what would work and still fit inside the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back over to that portion of my workbench and see uh, how I can line these up. I was only able to get one of my super electric horns for now. Uh, so I'm just gonna go with one for this install and then I'll Circle back later, I have to buy some uh, scrap metal or whatever to maybe extend this bracket out further. Uh, unfortunately, the way this is, this a second horn won't be able to clear. And I want both the horns on this side of the bracket because it's gonna hang in the car like this. This lip, this is where the screw was. And so it's gonna sit like this. Um, you know, the, of course, driver's side is over here. And so when it sits like this, there, there's some stuff over here on this left side. And if I try to put a horn here on this side, the left side is gonna impact. So I have the one horn facing forward. So when this would sit in the car, it'll sit like this. And I went ahead and actually took the uh, relay and just mounted it where the second horn would be, maybe on a follow-up video when I do get the second horn fabricated up um, with an extended bracket. But so I just went ahead and used this open spot here for the relay, so I opened up the relay a little bit to match the hole here so I could actually just reuse the second horn bolt but any really bolt setup will do. And then I ran the uh, power wire, which is this yellow one, to the positive of the horn. 
and then the ground is actually going to be uh, attached either to your negative terminal of your battery or to any kind of ground in your car. So I'm probably just going to use a, you know, a, a bolt somewhere on the frame or whatever and mount this because the battery, of course, if you're familiar with the Mustang, is uh, up near the windshield on the passenger side, whereas the horn will be uh, up in the front fender area on the driver's side. So I don't, I mean, I, I probably could run a longer cable if I wanted to the negative battery. I'll see how it looks. Now this course uh, is going to be to the positive uh, battery terminal and uh, this probably isn't long enough at all to run this cleanly. So I'm probably going to have to then splice in here, add some additional wire, solder it in and just make this much longer. And then, uh, yeah, I went ahead and attached this as like a vent or something like that, I guess for moisture. So uh, they actually do give you a little bit of tubing. I didn't even notice I had that, but I just heated it up a little bit and was able to just attach it directly to the back of the horn. Uh, so not too bad there. And then of course you have a blue and white wire. This is actually going to attach to your trigger uh, horn wiring uh, or harness. So that's what you unplugged from your OEM horn right here. And uh, I'm not sure how that will line up, but this looks like these are circle pegs or circle pins and these are some big ass blades so I might just need to uh, create my own type of harness or setup for the horn and we'll see how that goes unfortunately there's not a lot of room to reach that uh, setup so maybe I will reuse uh, maybe this part of the harness or something like that so I'll see what I can figure out and then I will show you guys what I come up with I went ahead and actually was able to remove the connector portion of the horn you can see here it's like a little tab and there's two little i guess nubs or, or electrical nubs here and this is actually what was attached to that um, actually right here and you can actually pry this up and remove it so i went ahead and pulled this off of the horn and then i took the blade connectors that came with the electric air horn and just wedged them into the little um they're almost like little circle connectors that would then couple around these holes here they're not blade or anything like that, but what I was able to do is I was able to wedge the blade connectors into those um, that connector on each one. It's actually pretty solid. It's not gonna, of course, I'm not gonna trust it purely, but I'm gonna wrap some tape or something around here and then get this connector all locked into place. And then what we can do is use this plug directly into the car harness without having to splice into the car wiring harness and affect any of that. Worst case, if I mess this up, I can just order a new you know, OEM horn. No big deal. I'd rather do that than mess up the actual car harness. So I'm going to see what I can do to maybe stabilize this. Maybe I'll use some heat shrink or, or something like that to lock these into place. Because, but I mean, right now, it seems like it's on there pretty good. Um, I don't think there's, it, it matters which side is which. I think this is just a, you know on or off signal that passes through here. So... Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool that worked out like that. I'll see what I can do to get this, you know, a more final uh, permanent looking attachment. Here's my super fancy uh, plug. Um, I actually use some heat shrink when I've coupled everything together and then uh, just a couple of zip tie and then some electrical tape. I don't really like using electrical tape because it gets kind of nasty, but I can't find my Tessa tape that I always use for electrical work. Somehow it's disappeared. I guess one of my kids ate it. And uh, so this is what I'm left with. Got my, my harness, this will plug back into the car. And then I'm probably gonna have to extend this uh, wiring here. We will see, I can do that at the car with an extension cord, I guess, with my soldering gun. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this fit into the car. And this uh, connected back to the bracket with my uh, bracket screw that came with, you know, with the, uh, would attach the bracket originally with the OEM horn, see if this can actually fit. And then I'll try to figure out how I'm gonna run this power cable and where I'm gonna run the ground. So I'll be looking around before I actually do bolt this in. Extended the power wire from the electric air horn. And what I did is I just uh, spliced in uh, about halfway down, added some more, uh, I believe it's 16 gauge wire. And I just soldered it and put some heat shrink on there. So it should be uh, pretty durable and last just as long as the rest of the wiring. And I just doubled the length of the power wire. Hopefully that is enough. It looked like just from an eyeball measurement, not really official, that this should be long enough to get into the battery area. And I can still kind of route it relatively cleanly without looking, uh, you know, trashy or anything like that. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this out to the car and we'll see what we're working with. It is installed, as you can see it down there. Unfortunately, one uh, electronic air horn, could not get the other one. I see where I could probably run it now if I put it on the top portion where that relay, I had the relay mounted. And actually from before I put it in the car, I did have to rotate the horn a little bit more and kind of the orientation you can see right here, it is a big horn. My connector is plugged in down there. My funky, it hadn't fallen apart. I did have to extend the ground wire and I actually uh, mounted it. You can see right there where the wire kind of goes to that uh, uh, blue piece of the, the bumper support or whatever. So I have it um, plugged, or, you know, connected behind that screw right there. And then I have the power wire right here. It's, I haven't, you know, cleaned it up yet, but I ended up running it uh, underneath this little radiator support over here, underneath this radiator support. Then I have it go down underneath this uh, chassis portion of the car right here. And then I have it just kind of tucked up there for now, loops around, and then I just tied it into the positive uh, terminal. There is the fuse, I believe that is right there. And uh, yeah, everything is good. I did a quick test and it is late now and it is extremely loud. I'm gonna have to actually do my decibel test tomorrow, but my wife doesn't want me to drive down the road a little bit, so she might test it out. Maybe I'll get a clip of that, of her uh, randomly honking at 10.30 or 11 p.m., um, you know, on an empty street or something like that. But overall, the worst part was, was bolting that bracket back in. There was no room. I had to contort my arm in there. And yeah, there was just no room with how big that, that <laughs> air horn is that I literally took me probably 30 minutes just to screw that bolt in and get it lined up. Super pain. But what I'm gonna do is kind of just maybe zip tie this cable a little bit more cleaner, kind of uh, you know bring it over to the side here. And then I'll put this top radiator cover back on. I'll put the battery cover back on. Look, that's just three pop clips to get that cover off if you've never done that, super easy. And then you can just kind of run your stuff like that. And uh, yeah, overall, <laughs> not the easiest um, install. Um, if you're if you're just going a little bit louder, you can get the dual horn. If you want to get crazy, and you have a crazy wife like my, um, you can go with this route. And yeah, well, I'll show you guys. It's 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 definitely louder. Buttoned up the engine bay, and really you can't tell there is anything that has been added to my wife's Mustang. Down there, hidden. You can kind of see the relay, kind of shiny. Um, but the wiring, tucked it up under here. Um, I actually did zip it to the uh, radiator overflow tube right here. So you can see a little bit of wiring kind of coming out here. I didn't want to tuck it and have it float between uh, underneath the shield here and just kind of flopping around. So I just tied it into here and then you know, ran over here, added a zip over here, and then it's mostly hidden. You kind of see it sticking out here a little bit, but it's pretty well hidden away. Goes up underneath here and I mean, Unless you're really looking for it, you probably think it's a stereo or something like that, but can't really see it. So we're gonna cruise around. I'll probably switch over to my uh, cell phone. Maybe I'll grab some footage of my wife going bonkers. And then uh, we will get back here. And tomorrow I'll do some uh, decibel readings, see how much louder it is. Cause it's definitely <laughs> one, that I barely tapped it. It's, you know, it is late. I didn't want to piss off my neighbors and it was, it was crazy. So. <laughs> go ahead and get in the car we'll see what we're working with it is now the following day stormed all night and all morning so finally get to take a look at the car and uh the test uh was a failure i put everything back together i initially did a quick test with the wiring all out the horn worked fine buttoned everything up made it all the wiring look clean like i showed you guys had my wife hop in the car i was going to record some footage of just her testing it out she goes and hits the horn once we're out of the neighborhood nothing so something had came loose or something wasn't working quite right got home still tested still was failing um not really 100 percent sure what it was so i of course pulled everything back out i did have a couple lessons learned i'd like to point out to you guys uh, for your install is cool thing about how this uh, horn bolts to the bracket you can actually loosen this up and swivel the horn out of the way put the bracket in place and tighten it up uh, right here to the car and then swivel the horn into place and tighten it up you actually will have a lot more clearance and 
so when I t initially tried to install it by having the horn already locked in how I want it, you know, facing forward, uh, it took me forever to tighten this bolt up because I can only, you know, wrench it like a fraction of a of a centimeter with each turn. So it took forever. By rotating this out of the way, I could actually was able to remove the bracket with the horn. And now I'm actually doing a test to troubleshoot. If did something fail? Did the horn fail? You know, this is an Amazon special. It does have some one star reviews. It has a lot of five star, but it has a lot of one star people complaining about it not working. So to show you guys an overview of how everything works, you have this relay and the relay will actually get the signal from the uh, horn when you push in the horn, when it's plugged into the harness over here. And so then that will actually open up this relay and then that will allow you to actually uh, fire your horn. So you don't actually send the signal from the car directly to the air horn. It actually goes, triggers the relay, the relay then fires the horn. That's why you have power wire going into the relay that then goes into the electric horn. You have a ground, of course, that goes to the frame of the car or the negative battery terminal. And then you have your two uh, um, like connectors right here, which tie into the horn relay. And to do a test, if you want to test this before you actually get it buttoned up to see if you know the relay does it trigger, does the horn trigger and all that fun stuff. So for right now, I'm actually going to unplug the power wire to the electric horn. So now I can do a test to see if the relay is firing. You can actually hear it clicking if it works. And to do that test is you're going to actually have one of your uh, horn, horn signal uh, relay connectors running to your negative battery terminal or ground. And the one's actually going to go to your 12 volt source, such as the positive battery. This is just to simulate it without it actually having to be, you know, kind of in that awkward spot over here to try to test. And uh, you actually see that tied in like that. And then I actually just left one of the wires bare right here, just kind of real cheap. And then when you tap it, you hear that? I don't know if it's audible. That's the relay firing. So that's telling me the relay and this whole setup right here is functioning. So the relay didn't go bad or anything like that. Now we can test the actual horn. I actually stuffed some microfiber towels in this thing because um, my head's going to be relatively close to this thing and I can't find my earplugs. Now, I'll go ahead and tuck those microfibers in there real quick. Of course, I banged my head on the hood. <laughs> and now we can plug in the positive into the electric horn. All right, we got that plugged in place. The negative from the horn is, is on the battery terminal negative as well. So you have the relay right here, and then you have the negative battery to the electric horn, positive going to the relay, and then the same setup here. Now, if I actually tap this, it's I'm gonna back away, and it should ignite my electric horn. I have, like I said, the microfibers in there to help muffle it. So, and you don't really wanna hold it down for long periods. I'm just gonna kind of tap it, see if it fires. That tells me the electric horn is working relays are working and then what I believe happened and why my car stopped working it was my little rig together harness uh, came uh, undone or got some moisture in there and that caused the issue so let's see all right sounds real weird because I do have the microfiber but it's telling me relays working horns working so nothing failed here I think it's my harness work um, and my connector is what caused issues so I may put this part of the clip earlier on so you guys can show you how to test it yourself or I may just leave it in order and you guys can laugh at me. But uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the car and then I'm gonna try to solder up a better option for my connector. As you can see here, I have redone the connector. Um, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but it should hold up compared to the other one, which was kind of, I mean, it was kind of janky from this start. Probably should have started with this. But what I did is I actually extended these wires. So you can see here, I actually spliced into them, lengthened the power wire between the relay and the electric horn. Also the two wires for the horn harness in the car. It was kind of awkward to plug that in because you had to just, uh, there wasn't much room to work with. So I extended these out. Still gonna be a little bit awkward because the harness uh, on the car itself is pretty short and you have to kind of plug it in. But this should maybe let me reach down, plug it in before I install the horn, which will give me more room versus trying to plug it in with the horn in place. And then what I did for the connector is actually um, soldered on the wire. So I actually cut off these little uh, terminals, left a little bit extra room just in case I ever need one, I wanna go back. But uh, what I did is I cut it off and then I actually soldered the cables directly into the plug that I pulled off the OEM horn. 
and then I just packed it full of uh, silicone. It's a high temp silicone, clear silicone. It should um, hold it in place. I have this stuff used in a few other places that have been in place for years and it still holds up great. This is just to give it some extra stability so the solder joints won't break because it's kind of an awkward spot to solder and this will hopefully lock it in place. Solder joints will stay in place. The electrical connection will be fine and then we should be good. Hopefully don't have a, an issue where the horn stops working again. Now, as you saw, everything was tested. The relay still works, but just make sure uh, it does stay plugged in. And uh, so relay was tested good. Horn was tested good. Hopefully with this locked in uh, and once I reinstall it, we should be good with that. Now, what I'm going to do is I actually do need to let this sit for about an hour or two before I can actually uh, install this on the car. So this silicone can, can completely dry, harden and all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, sorry, kind of a mess. I got a lot of stuff going on right here on my bench. A lot of scraps I haven't cleaned up. I'll clean it up later. And uh, you know, if you're interested in like a solder station set up like this or some solder or these snips, I'll put the links in the description for all this stuff. And uh, so if you want to do some of your own electrical repair work or whatnot, and give you a little bit more versatility if you're just stuck with the out of the box harness. As you can see, the wires are all way too short. And I mean, yeah, of course you could just do the typical crimp, you know, connectors, crimp everything together. I always like to solder everything if I can and, you know, give a nice heat shield. It should be a permanent solution and uh, not an area that can fail really as long as you soldered it properly. So uh, yeah, everything is uh, ready to go. Gonna let this dry. We'll come back, put this back on the car, hopefully, Version two will work. Version 2.0 of my harness uh, build or connector build. And you can see everything down there with the extended wire. It's a lot more slack. Before it was super taut, probably causing some of the issues, but definitely was the, uh, my connections to the uh, connector that then plugged into the car harness. I'm pretty sure one of those tabs just came loose. So now they're soldered in, siliconed in, and should hopefully be good to go. Now, I retucked all the wires. Real quick test, it is getting late. I don't want to piss off any of the neighbors or my kids in the house. <laughs> so let's, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, ooh. <laughs> Dogs are barking across the neighborhood. But uh, I'm gonna drive down the road a little bit and test it out a little bit more. See if it actually, you know, nothing comes jostles loose just driving down the street and then uh, we can go ahead and hopefully do the final test if it holds up and get us a comparison before and after and then see you know this could be one of the rare convertible mustangs with an air horn looks like it's quiet for a second real quick test of the horn inside the car windows down Maybe you can hear that. The mic is on my shirt, um, but uh, got another car coming, so that'll have to do for now. So overall, it's a significantly louder sound from inside the car, at least. Definitely from outside, but uh, before you could barely hear anything or you wouldn't even hear your horn pretty much. Now, it sounds like the train's coming. We're going to go ahead and try to test the uh, decibel level of the new air horn. Standing in front of the car and honking it, it is a magnitude of times louder. It actually kind of hurts my ears. But uh, this cheap phone app that I have does not seem like it's very accurate. It's like pegging all over the place just for me talking. I doubt my normal speaking voice is hitting 96 decibels. So I don't think this is <laughs> probably a good test. Uh, but just audibly listening to the car, it is much louder. I'll go ahead and reset it and we'll, we'll see what, it, what kind of reading we get. And it looks like it pegged out. It says its value is too high. So I think this, the microphone is just pegging out. And it says 102, but I don't believe it. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is not a very good test. But just listening to it, I'm not sure if it passes through the audio. It is way, way louder. And uh, it's definitely a head turner on the streets when you honk at somebody. They actually notice and they move out of the way quite rapidly. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this one up. After a few small speed bumps along the way, the electric air horn has successfully been installed on my wife's Mustang. And we've actually driven the car around for a few days now, and it's been working perfectly. We honked the horn and cars notice, 
and they move out of the way if needed or uh, you know they just get out of the way that's definitely why we installed this horn uh, unfortunately was only able to install one of these electric air horns i may try to add the second one at another time stay tuned for that video if i do go that route and as you saw i had to actually rewire the harness so make sure you kind of follow the second uh, setup of the harness uh, configuration versus my first attempt which was kind of shoddy to begin with but overall definitely a huge improvement on sound hopefully a huge improvement on safety uh, my test for the decibel reading is uh, just inaccurate it didn't seem like it read anything properly so that's uh, unfortunate I guess it just can't handle high sounds I probably need to get a dedicated decibel reader for some future videos but uh, you know it is what it is Physically standing in front of the car and honking the old horn versus the new air horn is a drastic difference. They actually hurt your ears. So I don't recommend standing in front of, of the car and, and blasting on that horn. Now, what they do say about the horn is don't hold the horn down for more than like five seconds or so because it is a uh, smaller uh, electric air horn. It's not like an old big truck horn with its own dedicated compressor. So you want to actually just kind of not go super crazy with it. You can actually blast it, but just don't hold it down. Overall, the install was... Um, Definitely more interesting, a little bit more challenging than expected, but uh, you know, the end result I think was definitely worth it. So if you guys like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share all that fun stuff. Check out my uh, website, zilla.com, Z1LLA.com. Check out my merch shop, zilla.com slash shop. Feel free to pick up any of the cool merch I got going on, stickers, shirts, t-shirts, sweatshirts, all that fun stuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Anyways, have a good one.